Hi, my precious friends. I hope you can hear me well. I'm in this little house with plants, so it's a little different sound. But I ho hope it works out fine. Um, I want to talk, talk about um, friendship. What a real friendship is. The Bible says that there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. In the body of Christ, we're all brothers and sisters because we are united in our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. God is our Father. We are His sons and His daughters. But you see, just because someone is your brother or your sister doesn't mean that they are your personal friend. Um, so I want to talk about what a real friendship is like because God wants us to have quality people in our inner circle. And it's important that we understand that we should not share everything with all our friends. You don't share your most intimate things with your crowd. You share it maybe with your inner inner circle, maybe one, two, three people that you really can trust. You see the enemy, he loves our mistakes. He loves uh, if we have a background of something wrong we did back in there. And he likes to use our past against us. He likes to use our flaws. He likes to use uh, our weaknesses. That's what he got. So he can take that information that you share with someone you think you trust. Um, and use it against you one day. Especially when you get into the ministry, the, the road is very narrow and you will notice that many people that you thought would be close to you will fall off that path. The gate is narrow, the road is narrow, it sacrifices to walk up that hill, to get the hinds feet on the high places, it's going to cost you something. And one of those things we are paying is people leaving us or we leaving them. You see, when you grow, your friendship circle will either grow with you or God will change it. God will not allow that you will have friends that are uh, mocking your faith or against your belief system, thinking you are ridiculous when you have big faith, um, judging you, uh, you know, are critical and negative towards your walk with God. Maybe they don't understand it because we all have individual walks with Christ. Um, so we can't compare in many ways how God is shaping us in this life. Maybe you are going that direction and I'm going that direction, but we, unfortunately we have the same goal and that is to walk with Christ. So we, could, we can't compare our walks with each other, but we should love one another and respect one another and, and, and encourage one another. Jesus he was so sensitive that he couldn't do any big miracles when he came to his own city because of unbelief. I heard of preachers, famous preachers back in the days, they needed to have the first three road in their services. They needed to have people who really had strong faith. They couldn't have people who were uh, critical, negative, sitting on the first two, two, three road in their um, their services because it affected the anointing um, and the atmosphere. Negative spirit. 
So the other day I talk about, talked about how we have to be careful, including myself, not to be critical and talk down something that God wants to change. So it's easy when we have people around us that are doing something to hurt us that we want to talk about that person to another person. But the goal is to have so much self-control that you just go to God with all the issues you have with people. You don't solve them with other people. You solve them with God. But we need relationships. We do. We need relationship. One can help the other up, the Bible says. If one fall down, the other one can help him up. But it's important to not be uh, together with a blind person spiritually, that you have the right people, that you don't have people close to you who are in new age, for example. You can have them out there, but you can't have them in your closest circle because sooner or later their their belief system will affect you even if it takes years the enemy can use many years to deceive us if we have the wrong people in our inner circle that they slowly are making us think like them or it's the enemy actually who is behind it. Um, another thing I want to talk about today is gossip. We all do it, we all have done it, but God doesn't like it. And it's one of those things in the body of Christ that needs to be taken out. Um, the Bible speaks about it a lot. It's from the flesh. When you gossip about other people, the Holy Spirit cannot uh, I know, anoint you as much as he wants. If we are praying for revival and we are critical, we are gossiping, um, we are negative, critical, we're talking about other people, maybe you share other people's information. That is not a real friend. And maybe you have slipped with your tongue. You Somebody told you something. And then you gave that information to another friend. That can be really serious. You see, it's an expression called uh, five feathers can be one uh, chicken. So uh, we have to be careful who we tell our secrets to, that we really can trust them. And if you want to tell something personal from your life to a person, you should think one time, two times, three times in your mind before you decide to tell it. Because you don't know if that person is going to talk to other people about that story, if they maybe going to leave you in a year or two and then they sit on a lot of information about your past, about your, your weaknesses, your flaws, your secrets. So this is wisdom to not tell your secrets to a lot of people. Not even the secrets that God tells you. God shows you visions and dreams, be very careful to not tell people what God has shown you about your future. There's a lot of jealousy in the body of Christ and people that may seem to you nice and lovable in one moment can turn away from you the next moment and criticize you because they're jealous at you. I have experienced that. When I came into the ministry, I lost one of my best friends because of jealousy. And it hurt me really bad. Um, so we have to all be good at this, to really be careful on what we are saying 
from our personal life to a person, pick someone you really know you can trust. And you don't need to tell everything that God shows you either. You don't need to tell your whole life story to everybody. It's not wise. Because it, the more people you let in on your life, some of them will slip with their mouth sooner or later. And it can affect you big time. It can be rumors. The enemy can twist it. So it turns into lies and it's not good. I'm not saying you should be paranoid, but you should be wise. You should be wise. So um, I just want to say this today as a little word of information about gossip. Gossip is, is sin actually when we are so eager to tell something about another person that maybe is tragic, maybe is, is a sad story. It's something that hurt that person. And if you are telling that information to another person, you are you're sinning actually. And God looks at that really serious. He does. So we need to repent from gossiping and not run around and be so sensational with other people's stories. Some people like to talk about other people's stories because they don't want to talk about their own life. They're hiding behind other people's stories. They're good at listening to people. They ask a lot of questions. And sometimes you get a feeling that you can trust these people, that they are good listeners. And, and then they can maybe, you never know if they can take your information one day and slip with their mouth and tell something to another person that is very, very secret for you. So be careful what you say to people. That's my word. Be very careful. Keep your cards close to your heart. You can share um, great testimonies about your life, where you glorify God, uh, stuff that you know is not going to hurt you, but don't be so fast to tell people about, uh, you know, personal things that are putting you on a negative spot. Um, don't tell everybody about your weaknesses. Don't tell everybody about your flaws. Don't tell everybody about your childhood, for example. Uh, if you have been experienced bad things, of course you should have friends that you can talk to. I'm not saying that you should all go all by yourself, but pick the right people that you really, really can trust. My mother used to say for many years ago, you don't know a person until you have eaten uh, a ton with salt together. And that is like impossible. It's too much salt. So we just need to be good at not gossiping, to keep our mouth shut, to have self-control and to, 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 to choose to rather talk about Jesus and, and good stuff about people. Not put your friends in a negative spot. Not, uh, you should cover your friends. Not make them feel naked by your words. Uh, I think this is really serious. And... This is one of the things that God showed me this morning and I need to think about it. You need to think about it. We need to be good at not gossiping and be a true friend. Be a reliable friend. Be a friend that someone can come so close to you that they can tell you some of their secrets and you will never tell anybody else, right?
you will keep the secrets. That's a good friend. So find those people. Ask God to give you friends that are reliable. Of course, of course sometimes people slip a little bit. And we are forgiving those people. We're forgiving them because we know we have weaknesses. We all can slip with our mouth. Is the most difficult thing is our tongue. We criticize with it. We, we bless with it. And then we gossip and we can do a lot of things with this, with this mouth there. And that's why the Bible is so clear to again and again train ourselves to speak holy, to speak righteousness, to speak stuff that is lifting up people's lives, not tearing them down. And you don't need to tell all the information your friend tells you. Be careful with your mouth and live a holy life with your words so you can grow and be excellent like God wants all of us to be. Have a wonderful day. This is my last day in this beautiful place. I'm going back to my, my home city tomorrow, Oslo. So I will talk to you from there. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen.